Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Fridays, Stories of Hope. It's a long weekend here in, I was going to say in California, I was just I don't know, California was a word that was just mentioned in a talk about five minutes ago. Uh, I used to live in California back in the day, but I live in Washington state now, and we're looking forward to the long weekend here in Washington and also in the US. We have many people that are listening to us from around the world. So just know that if we're not responding to you on Monday, we're on holiday. We're on Labor Day holiday on Monday. So we're here today, Stories of Hope. Super excited to bring you this series and in, in introduce you to these amazing guests that have literally changed their own lives and changing the lives of many other people too. My first guest today is Dr. Elizabeth Davidson. She's a holistic doctor, blood work specialist, plant medicine expert, clairvoyant, forager, skier and a single mom. Everyone's health is a puzzle, says Elizabeth, and she combines science and intuition to help people put that puzzle together. Welcome to the show today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's great to have you here because, you know, nowadays so many people are challenged with health challenges, mm -hmm. right? Sure. So what got you started in this field? becoming a holistic doctor? Well, picture a really tiny child, a four-year-old with migraines, a seven-year-old with joint pain so bad that she wasn't allowed to walk for a summer, an 11-year-old with digestive problems so bad that she couldn't eat. And picture that tiny child um, starting to recognize that all of the, the medicines and stuff that she was being given we're only making her worse. Um, I had MDs tell me when I was four that um, I had migraines because I was so stressed. And, and that was their only answer. And then as, as my health problems um, you know, got more and more added on, got more intense, uh, it's just more and more medications and I just felt sicker and sicker. So a lot of questioning and searching got me to where I am. Um, at that young, young age, I recognized that I couldn't take medications. They made me worse. Mm -hmm. And I also saw that, you know, the names they were calling my, my symptoms and my illnesses, they didn't really mean anything. They, they put a name on it and then they could match that up with a pill for me to take, but it didn't do anything for me. So I started digging into the layers of what's really going on and really digging for the roots of why I even had any symptoms. And that has become, you know, like a 35 year journey at this point, discovering so many, so many things and um, so many things that have helped and things that haven't done much, but also recognizing that we're also different in, in what things can help us and, and make deep change. And so I've been searching not just for my own well-being, but to find the keys that can really help most of the people that I come in contact with, because we all have this amazing innate intelligence and innate well-being that can be hard to access when we're told that we don't have it. Because one thing that myself and many people who have suffered with chronic illness often come across is that they're told they're wrong about how they feel about their bodies or what they feel is going on. When they go to their MD who spends you know, maybe five minutes with them a year, maybe 15 if they're lucky, 
and they're told they're wrong about what's going on in their bodies. And we're not, we're all right about what's going on in our bodies. We all know ourselves better than anyone else does because we live in our bodies 24 seven. And, um, and also that it's not just a physical thing, you know, helping people put together that their physical health is also related to their mental health and their emotional well-being and their financial well-being, their social well-being. All of those things are all connected. And um, so, like you said in my intro about the puzzles, <laughs> I've been I've spent the past 35, 40 years putting together the puzzle of my health and well-being. And um, that has helped me really look at the people that I work with and the people that I come across in my life as, you know, what's their puzzle? Like, how does that fit together? And how can we put it together so all the pieces fit in a really beautiful way so we can feel good? Because I also really believe on a deep level that we all have a special place in the world and a part to play. And if we are not feeling well in whatever way it might be, we can't play our part and contribute to society in the way that we really are destined to and, and, and will contribute the most to the world by doing. So I see that if everyone could contribute at, at their biggest level, because we're feeling really big, then um, we'd have a much more vibrant society. And that's the goal, right? <laughs> that is. And, you know, it's not, you said something that really stood out. It's putting that puzzle together and it's not a one size fits all. No, definitely that's, not. It's not a one size fits all when it comes to your physical body because everybody is different right everybody's mm -hmm. unique and so whatever trauma or you know situations occur within your body they deserve to be explored from the body's intelligence of of what 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 those messages are and that's what you have done in your own life and then you also that's why you became a holistic doctor and mm -hmm. you use also science like you said and help help you know, uh, on that perspective too. And, you know, I would have said that like a couple of years ago, I would have said that we're living longer and mm -hmm. you know, we're living longer now. We're, we're, we, because we're an evolved human that, you know, the, the physical body is able to self-regenerate and self-heal. We all have that ability if we listen to what the body wants, what the body needs and start tending to those messages. And that's why your work is so important, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that, I love that you use the word messages too, because you know, so many people look at symptoms as being something wrong with them. And when I look at symptoms, I'm like, oh goody, your body is talking to you. What's going on here? Like, why are you having these symptoms? What's the underlying reason so we can get to the root of the symptom? And, you know, like the Western medical arena tends to want to just put a pill on top of a symptom. And to me, that's like putting duct tape over your check engine light. <laughs> Like, would you do that in your car if the check engine light come, came on? Would you just put a piece of duct tape over it so you didn't see it anymore? Or would you go find the problem? Would you take it to your mechanic and have them run the little computer thingy and find the code and, and find the problem so you could fix it? Well, in my realm of, of health, it's not about just putting something over that symptom so you don't feel it anymore because that's just, you know, putting that duct tape over your check engine and, and eliminating the, the, the obvious part so you don't even think to look for the roots anymore. Actually, what you just said, that is what we've been doing for yes. all these, you know, we've been conditioned in that to uh, not go to the root core, 
to not ask the body's intelligence, to not ask what what is your body trying to say. We've been conditioned by that, but, you know, because again, it's all it's been all about uh, a money maker with, and that's just calling it out for what it is, and that is, you know, if we can put uh, a pill on it, that is going to make somebody some money and so that program keeping that conditioning going keeping that programming going um that is where we've come from and now to really shift the paradigm and go in a different more holistic more natural more organic direction takes a lot of courage takes a lot of you know takes a lot of courage uh to be able to do that but i'm finding too that people are getting more and more interested in having that long lasting internal change rather than just getting rid of the symptom in the moment and um, and having to keep taking a medication or something in order to get keep that symptom gone and then having to take another medication in order to um, get rid of whatever symptoms the first one caused and so on, that people are really looking for those ways to find long lasting internal change and um, that's what I'm bringing to the table as my offering to the world right now is, is assisting people to um, find that long lasting internal change and build it for themselves. Become your own self healer with, yeah. you know, with a person that, that wants that for you. What are your social media handles where people can find you, look you up, learn more about you? Uh, pretty much everything is Dr. Elizabeth Davidson. So the DR, Elizabeth with a Z, Davidson with the two Ds. And um, I'm on Instagram and Facebook that way. That's my website, drelizabethdavidson.com. I also have a YouTube channel that has some free webinars on there that have to do with some of this kind of stuff. And um, I recently created an online course too for people who want to do it the DIY way. And um, so that can be looked up too. It's on my website, of course. And um, I'm happy to also meet with people individually just to see if what the work that I do is a good fit. And that's a free consult that I offer. So all that can be accessed through my social media and the website. I think this is so awesome to have met you and to know you because I work with a lot of people and even in my community, people that, you know, that we know that this is an alternative and this is a very, you know, healthy, well alternative because that is the direction where we're going. So it's good to know, uh, to have you in my back pocket, so to speak. So uh, I really enjoyed the conversation today. What do you want to leave the people with? We have about a minute left before we uh, take a break. I want people to recognize that we are all intuitive and that we all have a deep inner knowing that is telling us what's right and wrong and if you feel something is right you're right if you feel something is wrong you're right <laughs> and go with that and always ask for another opinion if you have a diagnosis always and i'm happy to be the one to give that other opinion too but um it could save your life and I heard this once before from someone, and they said that when you get an, a, a diagnosis or whatever, that's not really the emergency. It's right. not like, you know, you have time in there to explore what's there and really discover the right path for you. Elizabeth sure. Davidson, it was an honor and a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you, everyone, for listening and tuning in. We're going to go on break now, and we'll be right back with our next guest. Welcome back, everyone, to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I have my next guest with us, Amber Freeland. She's an intuitive business coach with seven years experience blazing the trail for heart-centered women in online business. She is a certified master quantum healer specializing in the subconscious mind as it pertains to generating wealth and time and freedom. Amber teaches her clients a unique energetic balance of feminine magnetism and masculine power in marketing and sales. She uses different forms of manifestation subconscious reprogramming, and other healing modalities to set the foundation for her unique and cutting edge marketing systems and strategies. 
Welcome to the show today. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. So glad you're here because we were talking in the green room before coming on. You're already living in paradise. And uh, so you, you're living in paradise. You're helping women generate wealth in their businesses. Yeah. I mean, and that is a really wonderful service that you're offering to humanity. I just want to say right off the bat, because when women have money, shit gets done. <laughs> That's so true. That's right? so true. Yes. And I feel like I'll, I, I feel right off the bat, like I should share that yeah. the, the, that the reason for that coming up for me right now is that it gives us a sense of safety and security. Well, and look at where we've come from. We, we certainly haven't uh, been in generational wealth because mm -hmm. what has been our past conditioning? Mm -hmm. you now, I was just talking to two women last week that I was inviting into certain programs and they told me, I have to go ask my husband. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Right. I have to ask my husband. I have. It's one thing to ask the husband for like, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, you know, but having to ask the husband for money when, mm -hmm. when something that you want to do for your business, that's what we're talking about here. Right. Yep. It's powerful. It's common. And my husband and I have, we met in business, so we've always run business together. So everything that we do that I share here is, you know, we both do that. And I know that's really unique and not a lot of people have that, but every once in a while I meet a woman who's in the same boat and they're fascinated because it's not always easy but at the same time I'll always ask him because we make business decisions together but yeah it's much different than asking for permission or no. or asking for money because I don't have any you know right and that's mm -hmm. a whole different I mean it sounds like you guys are business partners you guys are in the yeah. same field together but when you have to when when the woman isn't in her own money Mm -hmm. she wants to do something this is what we're talking about because in your intro you talked about feminine magnetism yeah. and in order to have feminine magnetism it, you're a manifester totally you are a manifester and so that means that you're not operating from a state of lack and you know i'm saying this with a lot of grace but the yes. masculine energy of in where we've come from has mm. been programmed from a lot of fear and mm. a lot of control and a lot of manipulation and lack that's right. And so these are these are the things that we have to overcome and override. Yep. Right? Absolutely. Yep. And that leads me straight into deep off the deep end, but I know I was listening in before we popped on and I know that these are some high level conversations. So that leads me right into honestly the subconscious mind. Yep. And it might be like the first time some listeners have heard this term and others might think, "Oh, my favorite topic ever." But for me, it always comes back to that because our subconscious and the way that we're programmed, usually from childhood or from past experiences in adulthood too, but from those monumental moments in our life, we form subconscious programs and those subconscious programs drive our actions and those actions drive our results. So back to the masculine feminine thing, I'm naturally quite more masculine, very structured, number cruncher, spreadsheet person. For fun, I get my planner out and book out my next two weeks and what I'm going to be doing at any given moment. Most women are the exact opposite. So I've had to actually learn how to embody that feminine side because I wasn't very magnetic before. I was more of that hustle mentality business owner. But when I started to look at well, when I started to really hit roadblocks and then go down the road of studying subconscious reprogramming and quantum healing and different modalities, that's when I really finally started to understand that the result is actually mostly based on the action, but what drives the action is the subconscious. And so if people aren't getting the result that they want in their life, it's time to like finally hear that it's not your fault and that there's things that we can do about it and that you have built those belief systems over many, many years time, so people beat themselves up for procrastination and all sorts of things. And it's like, well, no, you can't do that. That's built into you from probably another adult somewhere at one point. And we can go in and heal those things now. And instead of forcing ourselves to take action, to get the result, we heal the foundation that drives action naturally. 
that gets the result. Then that means we want to do the things that are going to bring us what we want in our lives when we go all the way to the foundation. So good. So good. So true. When you hear something that is profound truth, it's like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's awesome because it's true. And then the other thing, I'm sure that you're doing this too in your programs with your, the people that you work with, the women that you work with, you know, women haven't been good. First of all, I have to agree with you. You know, we all, I too had to learn to become woman again. Uh, yeah. You know, to become woman, we had to learn how to embody those feminine qualities again to re to let our medicine come through, to let it yeah. all shine through, right? So many of us had to learn how to be women again, and then now with what we're doing with being in our generational wealth, you know, knowing that we deserve that and that we have a right to it, it's actually our birthright to be in generational wealth. And if you actually believe that from the subconscious, like you said then um, you can then take that inspired action and do what you need to do, right? Yeah. And so then having those conversations and sales, this is also another thing that women don't feel comfortable with because, oh, I don't like marketing. Oh, I don't like selling. Oh, I don't like talking to people about what I'm doing. That mm -hmm. I'm sure you come across as well. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh no. What happened? Oh. I love everything disappeared for a second, like everything blacked out, but we're still here. So that's great. Yeah. So yeah, I see it with like everyone. I would say, I would oh. like say 100% on to some extent with everyone I've worked with over the years, there's always something about the sales process or the marketing process, or there's something there that plugs them up, meaning like th it's just an action that they don't like taking or it feels unnatural. In fact, I made a couple of videos on magnetism just earlier today in two different places where I talked about how it's magnetism is not a strategy or a thing that you can do. It's a truly a way of being. It's a state of being. Yeah. And I talked today about how I feel like one of the fastest ways to that state of being Mm -hmm. is eliminating the things that we don't like. So delegating things, right? Or building a business according to your own personality has always been my, one of my favorite things to talk about. And not building according to your personality is definitely going to cause you to have to take act, to feel like you have to take actions that you don't like. And magnetism just goes down. I mean, when I think of a magnetic woman, I think of someone fully embodied in her purpose, fully authentic, allowing herself to show up the way she wants to, unafraid of judgment and like living a life the way she truly wants. So a fast hack for entrepreneurs is to just eliminate all the things that you really hate doing because it's dropping your vibration and it's definitely not magnetic, right? To watch a woman force things to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's actually unattractive. I just want to say for the listeners here today and for whenever you're listening to this in the future, you are witnessing a magnetic woman right now uh -huh. with our beautiful Amber and also in me because this, in order to embody that state of being, you have to really become that. I actually saw the magnetic woman, magnetic woman as a book title or a course title. That's something to look at. It's you know, Amber, I just want to say that I, I really enjoyed talking to you. I want to talk to you further on another podcast. Mm -hmm. I also want to invite your husband uh, to come on into a stories of hope if he's uh, interested. Um, I think that would be a good conversation. And mm -hmm. uh, definitely want to talk to you about other opportunities as well. Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I think it's wonderful what you're doing. We need those archetypal models, examples for people to look to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to, you know, develop your own style of being, having that, that permission, that inner permission still to be yourself, not to do it their way, but to do it your way. And, you know, you're an example of that. And so we need, we need those examples. So I want to thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. I hear you. And I really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what, let's tell the audience how they can find you, where they, where you want to go to your YouTube channel, okay. like, share and subscribe. Yes. And, right. You want to go to Facebook. Where do you want them to go? So it's really simple. Amber Freeland, it's F-R-E-L-I-N.com. Amber Freeland, 
Facebook.com has links to both of my Facebook groups that are really powerful. One's more energetic, one's really business centered. At the very bottom of that link, you'll find a gift from me called Millionaire Mind Shift. It's a subconscious reprogramming session. You don't have to opt into it. It's just there for you to use and enjoy it. And if you get results from it, you know, message me and we'll celebrate together. And uh, just let me know if you need anything. Yeah, that's really, really awesome. I'm certainly looking forward to speaking with you again. What are you doing on this Labor Day holiday weekend? That's a great question. Probably a little bit of work because I love what I do so much. Yeah. Just keep yeah. continuing to get things done and, yeah, and stay I, I, in I, it as much yeah. as possible. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about that too. I will be doing some of that as well while I'm also doing some resting as well. So uh, any final words before we close the show today? Oh my gosh. Just a reminder that to everyone that you're here to live an abundant life being you. You're here to live your fullest potential and you're here to live really abundantly doing it with options and choices and feeling free to do what you want in every moment and spend time with the ones that you love. That's a beautiful, beautiful message. Thank you so much for being here today. Gen mm -hmm. Generational wealth for all women on this planet. That's what Absolutely. I Absolutely. So for sure. Thank you so much, Amber Freeland. We're going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie show. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. I want to introduce you to our next guest, Nikki Nicole, entrepreneur, digital and social media marketer, trainer, and a badass chick. She's been self-employed since 2008 when the last recession hit. She never had a nine to five job as a backup income source. Started her career in direct sales as a top consultant and the highest sales was $36,000 in one month, which I find ridiculously fabulous. Number one in recruiting and sales in her team, now offering online training tips and tools via digital products to help the solopreneur level up to running a legit business in this new era and ways of living. Let's cut the excuses, says Nikki. Take 100% responsibility for you where you are today and make a change. Tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Let's get to work and let's create these results together. Let's get it. Hi, Nikki. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Awesome. Same here. Blessed to be here. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's so awesome. You know, we're, we're, my, my previous guest, we were talking about generational wealth for women and, you know, really it's time for women to move into their generational wealth and really have the abundance and the support that they freely want to be able to take action and get the results that they want to get. Because when women have the funding, when women have money, like I said to my previous guest, shit gets done. Exactly. Right. <laughs> So tell us how you get to, got to uh, where you are today. Like, what do you want to, what do you want to highlight right now? Um, mainly, you know, I started working in corporate America in high school and after getting caught up on how the corporate climate works as a teenager, um, I decided mainly like. I'd rather have my own business or my own source of income. So that way no one can go around chirping in anyone's ear just to get rid of me, you know, cause I've worked with a well-known cosmetic company and it seemed like every winter break, spring break, summer break, I would magically get fired and then rehired when the break was over. So huh. fast forward, it's like, I found out one of the managers were chirping HR's ear to get rid of me and try to bring in her cousins and relatives. And think about our mindset as a teenager in high school. You're not, you don't even want to make up your own bed, let alone work for a corporation, <laughs> you know? So they didn't do anything. You couldn't photocopy to save your life. That's why I got called back. But learning that's what was happening behind the scenes. I decided like, I need to have my own income because if I get older, rent, mortgage, car note, kids, husband. Yeah, like that getting fired doesn't work, <laughs> you know, because you have bills to pay, you know. So I got into um, college, went to get a degree, took 21 credits every semester so I can finish on time without having to take a loan. So literally I was like living on campus. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my Gave God. birth to two kids. One child was due during finals week. 
the second child was, came out the first week of school. And you know, like you don't show up to class, they drop you. And I had my schedule nice. I was like, no, 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 I'm due. Don't kick me out. <laughs> and as soon as I got my degree, the economy crashed. Um, literally like that summer I got my degree and it was just like, no one's hiring. Yeah, and yeah. it was just like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> and I got two small kids and a husband. How am I going to make money? You know, so um, that's when I got into direct sales. And now, direct direct sales is, is network marketing, right? Yes. Yeah, so I joined another company, which basically gives you permission to sell their products and services. And you basically keep the commission. So basically you buy the products wholesale, you sell it for retail and the difference you keep. Okay. You know, so I got into that just to generate some type of revenue right. to take care of myself and my kids. But for some reason, that same chattering from corporate America followed me into that type of industry. Isn't that interesting? I just want to point out that, you know, you have that there because what I'm seeing right now from you is that I'm deeply inspired by you, your tenacity, and also your uh, wanting to be completely independent. And so from job one, you know, to job, job two, even with the direct sales, um, that, that same thing was happening and you knew you wanted to make money and sustain and take care of yourself and be free. And, uh, that's what, that's what you're living now. Yeah. And, and it is interesting because like when you become independent, yeah, it gets harder, right, <laughs> like, right. you know, like what happens is which you, it may seem easy, but it's not. And I, what I noticed is that people don't attack a nobody. When you try to level up your life in any form or fashion, spiritual, mental, emotional, intelligent, relationship-wise, mindset, whatever, you're going to get attacked. It's, it's just, it's not if, it's just when. And a lot of times the attacks usually start with our own mindset, the, the self-conversation. Am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Am I old enough? Am I wise enough? Am I young enough? Am I dark enough? Am I light enough? You know, you know, I can't do this because I don't have this. And a lot of times that defeats you before you even get started. You know, a lot of times I try to tell people like, listen, you have to, you can't say I want this thing and then negate it with the words that's coming out of your mouth and the thoughts that you're saying to yourself. It has to be in line. Like you're self-sabotaging yourself, just thinking those thoughts or saying those things out loud. Because at the end of the day, words do have power. And then two, what normally tax other women that get past the self-defeating talk is outside talk. Friends, family members, spouses, coworkers, you can't do this. It's too much money. Well, you know, it's interesting how we'll get praised for getting a job as at McDonald's as a manager. But when we decide to become a franchise owner in McDonald's, we get chastised. Yeah. And the reason for that is because those people don't have the courage to take that leap. And so they're just speaking from their subconscious belief, projecting it onto you because they, 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 they wouldn't, they wouldn't have the courage to do it. Is that right? Exactly. And that's the second way we kind of defeat ourselves is listening into what other people are saying. Instead of getting validation from unqualified people, validate yourself, cheer for yourself, root for yourself, and just step out on faith and do the work. Because when you listen to other people, like you said, they project their fears and insecurities onto you. And now you're like, you're a 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. I should have, could have, would have, wish I, you know, 1995, I would have did this. Now you're living in regret. You know, so that is another thing that kind of stops people. And the third thing that I would say is like, sometimes you may get past yourself, you may get past other people's thoughts, but what some people don't realize is you have people who will intentionally try to sabotage you, like literally set you up. They're jealous. Because, yes, because your their conversations didn't stop you. Yeah. So I like to call it like the Roadrunner Coyote effect from like Looney Tunes. <laughs> like they will set traps they will buy your product and dispute the charge. They will write negative reviews on your page. They will tell other people not to be nice to you or don't buy your products or don't support you. Yes. They will go on live on social media bashing you. Yeah. Like yeah. it's going to happen because you know why? Again, people don't attack a nobody. 
like I like to say sometimes like your presence and your your title, your presence and your energy is bigger than that title. And some people get in their feelings. And you have to have that bounce back ability to get past that, to get over that hump. Because that's really like, like they say, sometimes God sends a storm to clear the path, not to destroy you. And some people see it as, a, oh, it's attack. What did I do wrong? And it's, it's a sign. It's not meant for me to do this. But no, it's really like, it's setting you up for the next level. It's setting you up for your greatness, your blessing. It's setting you up by clearing the path of all the craziness so you can go straight to what you're destined to be. Because at the end of the day, your destiny is tied to someone else's vision. Someone has to see you step into your greatness before you they get encouraged or inspired to step into theirs. And I think a lot of times, especially as women, we, we might get in our, in our own heads and think about ourselves. But if you think about the bigger picture of other people, who am I going to help if I step out on my own faith? Who's going to get inspired seeing me reach this plateau? You know, who's going to be encouraged to speak out on the abuse or the domestic violence or, you know, the, the being assaulted as a child? You know, if you don't speak up about what was hurting you and turn your mess into a message, that person who needs to hear it at that time won't be able to take the steps towards their blessing, you know? So it's important we're resilient, we bounce back, and we keep our circle close, those that's like mine, like us. I just want to say you're ridiculous. Uh, and I mean ridiculous in the most high way. You know this, right? So you are totally on stage, totally speaking profound wisdom. And I just really appreciate how you show up and how determined and dedicated and what a wonderful, wonderful role model you are for appreciate women, for your children, for the people that are witnessing you, even the haters. And so because they can't keep you down, because you're unstoppable. And so I'm glad I'm glad I met you. I'm glad you came to this show. I definitely want to speak to you again. But for now, let's tell the audience how they can work with you people how they can look you up. Let's find let's talk about your social medias and all of that. Okay, so I can be reached on Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and um, YouTube under The Diva Speak. So singular, T-H-E, Diva, D-I-V-A, Speak, S-P-E-A-K. You can find me on there. I have a lot of free resources on there, as well as paid one-on-one and group coaching sessions with me. That's so good. And next week, when you see this video being promoted on social media, Nikki, will you please uh, put your social media links below because sometimes people are driving when they're listening to this and it's just nice when they can have it clickable right there, right there, right there. Okay. No problem. We'll do. Okay. Well, it was an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show today. I definitely want to have you on another podcast, a longer one where we can go a little bit deeper and just, uh, go wild and crazy. So, um, look forward to seeing you again. We're going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. It's an honor and a pleasure to be with you on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. My next guest is Coral Richards, a dynamic and creative individual with a wealth of knowledge and experience, having worked in multiple service industries in the last 14 years. One of the biggest lessons she learned in those years was the importance of mental health and how unhealed trauma can keep you stuck and away from living the life that you've dreamed of. In particular, we want to talk about PTSD. Welcome to the show today. I'm happy to be here. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. Where do you live? I'm curious. I live in Winnipeg, Canada, so that's just... Nor it's north of South Dakota or North Dakota rather. Yeah. Wow. So it's it can get pretty cold there, huh? Uh yeah. <laughs> it's probably the coldest um province in uh Canada. So it can get really, really cold. So do you spend a lot of time indoors then working from home? Yes, I do in the winter time. And then when it's summertime, I'm outside, you know, getting about doing a little, you know, a few adventures here and here and there, but for the most part, I'm inside. Yeah. 
Well, that's really inter interesting. I've never met a person from there before, so but it's wonderful. I always like asking people where they live because we have people from around the world that are joining us. So I want to talk to you. You said you want to talk about uh, post-traumatic stress, the complex version. Yes. Um, because, and I said to you, I feel like everybody in the world today has put PTSD, you know, yes. uh, right? So let's get into it. Well, um, in particular, complex PTSD differs from PTSD because complex PTSD is from multiple traumatic experiences. So uh, the difference with PTSD, it could be one singular event, whereas with complex PTSD, it's multiple over a long term period. So what it does, it in a sense, it wires your mind to see the world in, in a way that may not be how it is actually happening in reality, but it really does put a damper on your perception of the world. Yeah. So you're helping individuals that have post-traumatic stress really get to the core of healing that trauma. Exactly. And, and getting excited about life, you know, from my own personal experience, it really can take away from living. It's almost like you're just existing because you have life and you're not really actually stepping into what you want to do because it, you're in such a state of perpetual fear that it's almost like even stepping outside of your house is a concern. I remember because I'm a, a part of a couple of groups. I remember speaking with a member of one group in particular and he was saying that he's lonely and I'm like, okay, well, you can go ahead and step outside. And he's like, well, I'm a bit disabled. And of course, this is where the excuses come in because your mind is trying to just keep you as safe as possible. So it's giving you all the reasons why you shouldn't step outside. And I asked him, I was like, well, all you need to do is really just step outside because that's how you build the connections. I mean, it's fair to build connections on the internet, but true connection actually comes from, you know, in-person interactions. And he, he flat out just told me, no, he's not going outside. <laughs> okay. And that's what it does. It just keeps you in a state where the things that you want to do consciously, subconsciously, there's a belief that is running that tells you, nope, that's not a good idea. You know, stay inside. So it really can debilitate you from having the life that you want. You can consciously write down what you want, but there's always a belief or a blueprint a blueprint running in the background that's telling you no it's unsafe to live that life that you want and really i mean people if you're listening to this if you are you know paralyzing yourself and stopping yourself from really living what it is that you truly want like you came here to live not to uh, live out your fears but to transcend them and move beyond them and that's why having a, a coach having a practitioner having a somebody that that is working in a specialty field or whatever can help you move beyond it. Then the, there was the person that told you no. And that person is just going to stay uh, and most likely die living uh, that way. Yeah, you know, it's, it's what one would call cognitive dissonance. So it's this conflict of beliefs versus what you actually want. And it's, it's not easy to get through, you know, and oh, I always sure. say the only... The only way out is through it, yeah. you know, because what you resist will definitely persist. So I, I know it's difficult for anyone that does experience complex PTSD, you know, but it's almost sitting in yourself and wondering, when I get to the end, am I going to be able to say that I did all the things that I wanted to do, you know, and it's that regret that sets in at that point. And is it worth it? In my opinion, no. And at the same time, I also understand how hard it is to take that first step. You yeah. know, it's, it's easy to have this conversation, but that first step sometimes is the hardest step to take. Well, that is the reason why you, you have to have somebody that's going to, you know, believe in you and hold your hand while you take that first step. Exactly. Someone that, that knows how to do that. Exactly. And, you know, if a person is you know, lonely and they want to go outside and then they don't take action to, you know, make it make, to connect, right? Whether it's connecting with nature or, you know, whatever, um, then they are, like you said, adding more trauma. They're, exactly. they're keeping, they're fueling that and keeping that actually going. Yeah, 
Absolutely true. Absolutely true. And it's not to cast blame or, or say that it's your fault. The thing is, the things that we've experienced through our lifetime may have not been our fault. I will give you that much. But at a certain point, it becomes your responsibility to make different choices, to ensure that you're living the life that you want. And as hard as that is sometimes, and it's when I say it's hard, I know it's hard. And I'm speaking from experience. I still struggle a, a bit with those internal battles today. And the one thing that I have that I can, I am so proud to say is that I have support. And that's a hard thing for a lot of people to accept because that is how they got to where they are. It's the people that were supposed to love, nurture, support them. For them, those were the people that victimized them. So it's almost hard to allow for connection to be built again, to allow that to happen again. So I get it. I always get it because I've experienced it all at this point, you know, but it's leaning into that because your greatest gift is coming from that pain. If you want to know what your purpose is, your purpose is not in the easy moments. Not because you're good at it means that that's your purpose. It's through those tough times, those hardships, that you will find what your purpose is. And that's how I'm here today. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm so glad that, you know, you're being so open and vulnerable by sharing that, you know, this is something that is that you're still dealing with this yourself, but that you have support. And again, that shows that you know, when we have support that what an important, you know, piece that is that you're not isolated by yourself and you're able to get through the things. And most of the time when we've been through these horrendous challenges, then we can help others that are also facing those exactly. challenges because we know what it's like. We can identify it's like, right. And, and, and you are very easy to talk to and very easy to identify with. So yeah. I can see how you can definitely help people. Yeah, and that's the strength that I use, you know, with CPTSD, it makes you very hypervigilant, right? Yes. So you're able to see everything. I walk into a room and I can tell when something has shifted without even trying. And for a very long time, I was feeling so much and it got me so uneasy to feel everything until I turned it into, into my greatest power. And that is how I'm able to, you know, resonate with a lot of people and in resonating with them and they're able to resonate with me, it gives them that safe space, which is what you, you just elaborated on, gives them that safe space to just show up and be vulnerable and just let me in so I could guide them through, you know, reprogramming those subconscious beliefs. Well, you know, you said it right now is you started feeling so much and that was the thing that we had turned down when you look back at to the 1950s, the 1960s, when we didn't allow ourselves to feel all of our senses yes. and we suppressed all of our emotion. Exactly. We didn't allow ourselves to feel and really, um, you know, because of our conditioning. And it's yes. not about, you said it too, it's not about, I don't think it's about blame, right? It's not, no, it's not about blame because as soon as we're wanting to point the finger out, we're already pointing it at the wrong place because no matter what, the finger always needs to be pointed back at you because really, truly in the end, it's really only you that can do anything about it. And then you have the resources, you have the support because God always sends all the right angels. Absolutely. Right? Yes. All the right people all the right situations, they, they, they're they always there. Yes. And you just have to be willing to take the first step. Absolutely. I, I couldn't have said it any better. Yeah. I mean, it sounds it like you've been through a lot and now you're living your purpose and also the whole piece about living the purpose. I think, you know, in this movement that we've been in, in the last you know, decade and the self-empowerment, self-improvement movement, you know, putting so much, pressure on purpose has kind of uh, also, you know, made it difficult for people because they think having a purpose is something that's so big, like, like something that's outside of them. But maybe our purpose is to live and feel. There we go. There we go. That so is we, absolutely true. You know, and the thing is, when you stop looking, it finds you. Yeah. It just finds you in the, in the weirdest way sometimes. And when it does hit you, there's this feeling that just rushes through your body and you feel so free. 
yeah. you feel like it, it all makes sense now why you had to go through some of the things that you've experienced in yeah. a different way. You know, you're so awesome, Coral. I just want to say you definitely, I definitely want to talk to you again also. I mean, I've been, that's one of the things I love about doing this show, the incredible, amazing people that I get to meet and that are so wise, so loving, uh, that are doing good things in the world. I just want to thank you so much. How can people look you up on social media? Okay, so you can find me, of course, on my website, indivinetime.com, and that's I-N-D-I-V-I-N-E-T-H-Y-M-E.com. Hopefully one day I'll be able to share that story with you, how I came up with the name. <laughs> or you can find me on Instagram at indivinetime. Good. Well, thank you so much, Coral, for coming on today. It was an honor and a pleasure. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We'll see you again next week. Same time, same station. Thanks, everybody. Take You've been listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at corneliastephanie.com.